Well, hello and welcome back to the Hatcher Auto Fab Four podcast. We've got a great guest on for you today. We've got Mr. Brad Lawson, who uh, is a local gentleman who uh, has since branched out and gone down to Western Kentucky to follow his dreams and coaching football. And Brad, thanks for coming on the Fab Four podcast today. Yes, sir. I, I appreciate it. I, when I saw uh, a few months ago when y'all started this, I've, I've been keeping up with it every week. So I listen to it on my way to work or, or out, you know, doing whatever out in the yard. So I watch well, it. Well, we're out to brighten people's day. That's our main goal <laughs> to make people smile and or shake their head one of the two. We, we can't figure out which one they're wanting to do here. So See, I used to watch y'all's little uh, – uh, football forecast too. Yeah, I, I'd get up there. I'd wait till Friday. I say, oh, who they're going to pick over in Central Kentucky this week? So I, hey, I, I've been watching y'all. Listen, I know you see these these deer heads. Oh, I got there. you. Yep. Yeah. Well, I was down. I went deer scouting on a farm over in Casey County uh, last uh, last week, probably on Wednesday or Thursday. And so we go into the Bread of Life Cafe down there. I'm sure most of you have heard of the Bread of Life that uh, supports the thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Yeah, great food. And so I'm I'm go up to the buffet and it's barbecue night. And I know this is not related to sports at all, but in a way it is. Uh, So I go up to the barbecue and the guy says, "Hey, are you that fat Frankie guy?" (laughs) <laughs> and I said, I'm not him, but I know who that guy is. He said, man, I recognized your voice. He said, I heard you, and I recognized your voice. He said, you're one of the guys on there, aren't you? And I said, yes, we are. He said, well, my son played for Casey County and graduated and played football. And he said, man, we watched you all every week. So yeah. I was like, yeah, kind of cool, you know, that you go <laughs> go somewhere. And, of course, Frank is a is a legend in Adair County. They love to hate Scott Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> I love Adair County. <laughs> but you always picked them to lose. They hated you. No, I, I, that one year they were really, really good. And they won, I picked them about five weeks in a row, and I picked yeah. an upset. I forget, somebody from Western Kentucky, or Kentucky yeah. Country Day or somebody came down there. And I picked them to lose, and they, they won. And I met those ladies. I can't think of Was it the yeah. Lasley boys? Yeah, that's I right. I met their, like their mom or somebody over at a restaurant in LaRue County and said, she never picked against us. And I said, I'm picking you the rest of the year until you play E-Town. And I did. And they won every one of them today. All right. Well, let's get it away and get started. Let me first introduce our cast. We've got Alec Williams, 2018 graduate of Taylor County High School. The old guy, which you see on the screen with the gray hair. Oh, uh, Scott Fat Frankie Franklin, the world's greatest football prognosticator. Ooh. And I'm a 1985 graduate of Adair County High School hailing from Columbia, Kentucky, who made my home over in Taylor County, Campbellsville. Again, Brad, thanks for being on the show with us. So now we'll make it about you instead of about us. And Alec, we'll let you go ahead and ask the first question. Brad, just talk about where you went to high school, uh, what sports you played in high school, uh, where you went to college, then your coaching career, where all it's taken you to so far. Well, I'm, you know, like Paul said um, at the start, I'm originally from Campbellsville, and I graduated there in uh, 1989. Uh, played baseball there for five years, uh, football there for four, basketball there for two. Um, then went on to um, Campbellsville University. Uh, didn't play my first two years there. Uh, actually, uh, coached middle school with Coach Franklin there for a year. Uh, then I decided that um, you know, I wanted to go back and play. And um, so I played my last two years at Campbellsville University, and that was probably the best decision I ever made, uh, just as – probably not as just playing college football, but being developed as a man uh, from Coach Finley. Uh, I, and I would say there are 99% of people who went through there would say that. Um, then um, when I graduated, I went, I was on the staff at Taylor County High School um, there for two years. And then in 1996, uh, I got hired uh, out west. So I moved down here to West Kentucky uh, to Mayfield and uh, spent 12 years at Mayfield for as a defensive coordinator here. Um, then left in 08, uh, 09, and went to Paducah Tillman for a year. Um, that didn't work out real good, but it, it is what it is. Uh, then I went to Grace as defensive coordinator there for three when Coach Gregory came. Uh, and started the program, or that was his first year, and we had some success there. Uh, I really enjoyed my, my time at, at Graves. And then I got the head coaching job at Callaway um, after that for three. And then that's when it kind of – that last year in, in 14, that was when um, I think 
I have to tell this before we go on. Uh, in 2014, which was my third year at Callaway, and we were, we were, I, I really felt we was going to have a good year that year. You know, we had gotten some wins, and we were 500 the first two years, and they hadn't had much success. And all of a sudden, in July, we are uh, in an active shooter training at school. And so my group's in a classroom, and it goes on, and an uh, active shooter comes in. And, and, and make a long story short, uh, one of the teachers there uh, threw a chair at the active shooter. And the chair did not hit the active shooter. The, the chair hit me. Uh, hit me in the head, knocked me down, knocked me out. Uh, so you know, took me to the hospital, and then and then so I had some I had some issues there, and I had a pretty bad brain injury there, and and but I still continued to coach, which was a big mistake. I should have just just took care of myself there. Um, but then you know I kind of got a little bit better, but then I got worse as as the semester progressed. And honestly, I mean, I'll be the first one to tell you I did an awful job coaching that year just because I was I was not healthy. And um, so at Christmas, I had to take care of myself. So I, I just left. I, I did some therapy on some different things. And it was more mental um, and, 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 and depression-wise because of the brain injury. But then the next year, I got a little bit better. So Coach Clark, who's the head coach at McCracken now, he hired me at, uh, at Hopkinsville. So I was getting along, doing good. And this was in, this was in, um, so this was in 2015. And so the next year, and so it's October the 20th, and we're playing softball in PE, and I, and I lob a, you know, a grapefruit up there and, and put, put one to a kid, and he hits a screaming line drive and hits me in the, on the other side of the head. So that knocks me out. So, um, so from October 20th of 15 till um, of probably of 2018, so you're talking about, you know, two, almost two and a half years, you know, I, I suffered for some from from really bad concussion-like symptoms, and you know, you, you talk about all these pros and stuff, and you talk about depression, anxiety. You know, I had a headache that never went away. Um, you know, social anxiety that was the worst because I I didn't want to be around people because I could not I, I could not articulate an answer. If somebody asked me a question, uh, I, I knew what to say, but I, I just I just couldn't get it out and. So I had to go to physical therapy and learn how to do things all over. I had to go to speech therapy, had to go to occupational therapy. And, um, you know, and, and so that like, right, right after I got my second concussion there, I went on disability retirement, uh, from, the, from, you know, the state. So I went through that year and then went through three more years of it, but finally I got a whole lot better. And, um, and, you know, during this process, I kept on complaining about my neck. But I was on workman's comp, and, and all they would do was they would treat me for my, my concussion. They wouldn't treat me for my neck. And so finally, I got out of workman's comp and finally got, you know, in the doctors, you know, that, that, I, that I got to pick. And one of the doctors said, well, something's wrong with your neck. And long story short, in January of 18, I had, a, I had a, my six and seven in my neck was collapsed when I got hit by that chair. And for three years, my, my spinal column, where the spinal fluid was coming down, I wouldn't, it was pinched off. So I, that was, I, was, was, I was not getting any fluid up and down in my body. Anyway, he went in, took it out, put a titanium, titanium one in there, and boom, all of a sudden I woke up. And it was the first time in three years I never had a headache. And so I slowly but surely, um, you know, got better. And then toward the middle of that 18, um, I, I started, um, you know, first of all, I never would have made it. I never would have made it through those three and a half years if my relationship with God and my faith in God was not prevalent every single day. And so that's when I kind of got involved with Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, then I got, um, you know, I got to be the area director. We, I started FCA Outdoors in Kentucky. And that was been, that was an awesome experience. It still is an awesome, awesome experience. And uh, so I got better. Then I decided, you know what? I think I'm going to go back because I only had two years till I could retire. So I went. So I applied for some jobs and whatnot. And then uh, Coach Loveless at, at Christian County last year, uh, he was my college roommate. We played together at Campbellsville. 
and uh, he hired me. And so I spent that last year. And then in February, I got a, I got a call from Coach Clark over at McCracken. And he said, hey, I, I need a defensive coordinator. I want you to apply for this. And um, so I applied for it, went through it. They offered me the job. And, and then here I am. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, from four or five years ago, considering what all I went through and, and just some of the, you know, I wouldn't wish what I went through on anybody. And, uh, but it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, I'm, I'm so excited to, to do what I'm doing now. And, uh, you know, I just hope that I hope we get a football season. Uh, but, you know, I, I spend a lot of time talking to people uh, through FCA and just through my coaching and, and talking about, you know, some of the things, you know, I, I I used to not want to share the story because it was it was tough because I didn't want to have to relive it. But now I think when I do, it helps people because there's always people out there that's going through mental mental health issues. And um, you know you can see a physical issue, but you cannot see a mental health issue. And uh, so I had to fight through that. And uh, but I mean I can I can sit here today and say I'm as healthy as I've been in seven seven eight years. And um, you know it's just uh, it's just a testament to my faith and not and not uh, not giving up and I, I could have easily given up um, you know you talk about there's a lot of a lot of uh, professional athletes out there that, that's had brain injuries that's that's took in their own life and I, I, I'm sitting here right now and tell you that you know that that crossed my mind several times uh, uh, just because I didn't want to deal with it but you know luckily I, I fought through it and, and and here I am with you guys all right Scott Bradley, as my yes, good old buddy, I'm so glad to see you today, and I, and I know it's been a rough road for you, and very proud that you're here with us today. But what, what, the couple things I want to talk to you about, first of all, is most of these people ain't gonna know nothing about them. Only you probably know about them. Uh, out right. of all the stuff that you can probably talk to us about, your college playing with some, your your time at Mayfield, which I'm interested in talking about. But right. let's be real: the, the the greatest thing you've ever done is won the. Uh, through the loom basketball yes. championship. That's right. You know, with, with only six players. I mean, come on, that, man, we had six players. Really, we had four and a half because some other guys weren't very good. Actually, and, yeah. And, I mean, you know, that's probably the greatest upset in the history of your life and my life as we won with four and a half players. You and I and Mike Fly Skaggs were able to pull off, uh, I don't know, we won like seven, eight games with five players yes. against Jamestown, Campbellsville. Shipping department, Woodrow, Will, what was his name? Woodrow Drive. Woodrow, that's Woodrow. Name. That's right. Winner, McQuarrie, winner's right here, boy. Let me yeah. tell you. Hey, yeah. if, if I knew, if I knew you was going to bring that up, I still, I've got that picture, the picture of us with the trophy upstairs somewhere. I've got it. I know winners. exactly where it's at. I mean, I can look up, I'm looking up right now at uh, at state championship rings and all this other stuff on my on my mantle up there, but I guarantee that right there was one of the greatest championships that I ever was a part of. What? Because actually, it ought to be I think up on we the wall somewhere. I mean, golly! I only, I actually, I only think we had five players. I can't I, remember. We had some guy named Tate Cutter Lee. We had Fly Skag, you, me, and, and Jay. Jay, Jay Heron. Jay Heron. It was it. Iron five. That was five. Think. That's all we had. Now, the other thing I wanted you to talk to these guys about, and I'm sure even Paul, even though he's old like me, he probably doesn't know this, and I know Alec does, and he doesn't even know that Louisville's not good in football. So I mean, you know. <laughs> um, Tell, tell these guys about your time as a as a football player at Campbellsville. When I, I was, it was a it was a coach uh, Boyle County, right? Chuck Smith, Coach Chuck, and y'all didn't have enough players. Like everybody he ran everybody off working y'all well, so harder. It was like the Junction City Boys over there. It was. Um, we were. It was my senior year, and uh, Coach Smith and Coach Thomas came in that year. Okay, at, at, at the high school, and um, so we started. We started the year in in like first of August or whenever we started back then. I don't I don't, I don't know. Um, with about 44, 46 players. So we went through the process and then we went to two a days. So this was like the second day of two a days. So I show up that morning, and we've got six players. Six <laughs> players show up, and I'm going, okay, what is going on here? So. The over the course of that week, we got a few back, we got a few back, and then we had to cancel. We had to cancel, uh, like Green County and another, uh, and we had to postpone Taylor County game. We had to move that to the end of the year. And then, about mid when we got like when we started the season, we might have had mid 20s, but then at the middle of the year, uh, we had 15, and that was it. And so, 
but 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 I'm but there was a lot of things that I learned about about that that year, that, that specific year. Number one, I would have did anything to have Coach Smith and Coach Thomas for four years. Anything, and my, I mean, I I would have been a whole lot better football player. Number two, I learned right then and there I wanted to be a defensive coach because they kind of I mean that was when I first first learned about scouting reports and breakdowns and, and okay, if a, if, a, if a team lines up in this, here's what they're going to do and, you know, all that other stuff. And then, uh, you know, we, that, 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 that year, I started the year, you know, always played linebacker, but then at the first of the year I was at line and then middle of the year they moved me to fullback because I was the only one that could run fullback trap. Um, and so <laughs> I ended the year there. It was me, me and, um, um, Marlo Hazard, Marlo Hazard was the running back. Anthony Campbell and me we were the three backs, and um, and that was a, that was a heck of a year. That was, but but you know, I, for me, one of the greatest things was is to see from that year and built and built over the like the next six, seven, eight years how Coach Thomas and Coach Smith you know, built that into, cause shoot, then well, that was 10 years later, that was in 88. Well, in 98, Coach Smith was at Bull and Coach Thomas, so we came down and played Camelsville mm -hmm. in the final four uh, when I was at Mayfield. So, you know, taken from, but but honestly, but we had 15 players and that was it. And I, and, and it was, uh, but it was a great learning experience. And, um, and it, and it, and it, it, it moved me, and like I said before, like, I want to be a defensive coach because of Coach Smith and Coach Thomas. Well, those are two really good coaches, obviously. You know, their, their, their resume speaks for itself, and they're definitely their focus to attention on defense in our area. In my opinion, they're probably the two of the best, if not, obviously, the best oh, yeah. uh, to, to do high school football around here, and especially on the defensive side. There's no doubt. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I still talk to Coach Thomas. Actually, I talked to Coach Thomas not too long ago, uh, you know, about some things um, that I was wanting to do this year. And I always, always have, uh, have, you know, asked questions about them and 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 watch their film and go how they do this, how they line up on this, and how they attack this. And uh, you know, I think there's no doubt that that those two, by far. Um, are you know the two of the best defensive mind in the state of Kentucky, if not two, not if not the best. Absolutely. Well, I know um, that a lot of people don't know, but in 1996, when you left Taylor County, that I got, I followed you. I was the next PE teacher slash basketball slash assistant football coach slash whatever they needed me to do. Uh, but but. What I was told there, you know, by your uh, mentor here, Mr. Franklin, was two things. Was stay out of the office and, and stay out of the teacher's lounge. And those were the two things that I, I – it took me a while to learn, but Mr. Franklin was right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, what I really want to talk about is I want you, if you don't mind, Brad, take us back. I know I replaced you. That's kind of when I heard your name. I didn't know you prior to that but right. you know, when I took over Taylor County I'm replacing Brad Lawson and you went to Mayfield mm -hmm. so talk about and obviously Mayfield is a mecca for for high school football talk about your time that you spent there your number of championships and, and what you all accomplished while you were at Mayfield um well the to preface it that uh on how I got there because like I said I spent the first two years there at Taylor County um, and so there in that, in the spring, you know, back then there was no internet and there was no social media. And I know you and, don't know anything about that, Alec, but there was no, internet. Yeah, there was no internet and no social media. And so, and I, I, I knew I wanted to be, I knew that, that my career path was, I wanted to be a football coach and I wanted to be a head coach. And so what I did was I went to the Curl Journal. I cut out the, the, the lit ratings, okay? <clears throat> and I went to the library and got a book of, all of the high schools, the school systems in the state of Kentucky. And I went down in the top 20, the top 20 lit ratings. I wrote a letter to every coach in the state and said, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, if you have a PE job open, you know, I'm football coach, ABC. And uh, a few weeks later, Coach Leahy from Mayfield called me and said, hey, we got a PE job open. I just lost my defensive coordinator. And here I'm 25 years old, 
I mean, I've only been coaching two years, and they, and they previously in '95 had won a state championship, and uh, so you know I go up, I come down here, and and when people say Western Kentucky, when in Camelsville, we're thinking Western Kentucky is Bowling Green. Okay, <laughs> no, the Western Kentucky is not Bowling Green. It is. We kept on driving and driving and driving. I'm thinking, am I ever going to get here? And um, so anyway. Um, you know, so I, I come, I come here to Mayfield, and um, you know, there I was spent twelve years there, um, and I'm pretty sure I'm I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure that first year, you know, we played Harrodsburg in the final four there at Harrodsburg, and Coach Franklin was there. Uh, I remember talking to him before the game, and uh, um, you know, that was a that that was an awesome team we played, and. Um, and then the next year in 97, we had the best team, I thought. I mean, we, we had the number one defense in the state. Um, you know, we only averaged, like, giving up, like, seven point something points a game that year. And in round two, um, we got beat by Murray 7 nothing. We'd beaten them previously in the year. And, you know, we were undefeated. We were ranked number one in the state. We really thought we were going to win it that year. And um, it, we fumbled the ball 12 times. They ran the opening kickoff back. They only, get, they only got 68 yards total offense, and we get beat 7 nothing. And uh, so that was Coach Leahy's – he was actually going to retire. Now, Coach Leahy, for the guy, people that do not know, he was, a, he was a living legend here in Mayfield. He was he was assistant here for 28 years or 25 years and then was a head coach for three or five and won two state titles from in 93 and 95. Um, but um, – and uh, so I'm – you know, like I said before, I was 25 years old. And I didn't really know. And, and looking back, how how blessed I was at 25 years old to be named defensive coordinator at Mayfield. I mean, that was that. You know, I don't think that would happen nowadays. Um, now, for what reason I got that opportunity, I don't know. Um, but you know, I took it and ran with it. And then, um, actually, that 97 year, I think that was when uh, Tyler County went to the semis that year. Uh, or regional finals, because I remember coming to Glasgow. That's uh, in '99, Brad. '99. Okay. All right. So I knew there was two. There was there was one year that we wouldn't play in, and that's when I came down and, and, and watched y'all. Um, and then '98, uh, we went to the state finals that year. Uh, we got beat by Middlesbrough, and I thought we were we were undefeated then going into that game, and they were a whole lot better than we were. Uh, then I no, I mean let me rephrase that. They were better than what I thought, uh, but we had we had a couple of breakdowns on defense that we hadn't had all year, and it just so happens, you know, that it, you know it is what it is. And then um, then we had about a four or five year run with Danville, uh, starting in two thousand. We played them every year in Final Four, and um, two thousand we were undefeated and they beat us. Two thousand one they came down here, we were winning ten to three, uh, going into fourth quarter they scored twice. And, um, and, and, and we lost. And, and right then is when – that was about the time when the air raid started coming into the state of Kentucky. And Danville was all wishbone. And then what they decided to do, they was going to spread us out. And then the second half, they'd run, that, they'd run the air raid. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I, didn't have, I didn't have no answers. And uh, so that whole summer, you know, I spent – we spent trying to defend how we were going to defend Danville come, you know, Thanksgiving weekend the next year. And uh, so we put a plan in play, place, and then that next year was one, arguably one of the one of the best teams ever to come through here. Uh, we were fifteen and zero. Uh, you know, we went we went about seven games, eight games there, a stretch of where the first team defense did not give up a score. Uh, we were just I mean, we had I had a bunch of good kids, and um, and then oh um, six we went uh, back to the finals and got beat by Newport Central Catholic and. Um, but out of those 12 years, we were in the Final Four 10, uh, never lost a district game. Um, and, uh, you know, so, I mean, that's, that's pretty, you know, I, I was spoiled. Uh, I, I really didn't realize, you know, when, but, and people just don't understand. People, people just don't understand uh, at, 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 in other parts of the state or just in different schools that when we go, when you, when you step on that field August 1st, we knew every single year that we had a chance to win a state championship. And, um, and that's, and that's, and that's, that's a lot of pressure. You know, it was pressure. I mean, it was, it was, it was pressure, especially when you're, you know, you know, when you're either offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, or head coach. And, uh, but 
you know, I, I enjoyed it. Um, you know, everybody, it was a lot of people asked me why I left and it was just time. I mean, it was, it was time because I wanted to, I wanted to be a head coach and, um, and I wanted to see if I could do what I did at Mayfield at other places. Uh, and, uh, so that's the reason, uh, that's the reason why I left there. Alex? Brad, talk about your time at Taylor County. Some players you coached, the uh, greatest memories in your years at coaching Taylor County, et cetera. Um, well, a lot of it is, if we go back to when I was, when I helped coach at, at the middle school level, a couple of years before I actually started, you know, I went, that was, as I actually, if, if, if you fast forward, uh, that, that was uh, Chad White, uh, Montreal, Irvin's eighth grade year. And we were, I mean, we, we, I don't know, I know we didn't, I, we won the conference, I know, but I'm pretty sure like the defensively, we just didn't give up a point, like almost a whole year. And um, so fast forward, then when Coach Todd hires me there, um, I think they are, you know, maybe sophomores or juniors maybe. Uh, so, you know, I get to coach them again. And, um, you know, I, I really, I, I, I enjoyed, but also, and and kind of get off the football, what I really enjoyed there at Taylor County, which obviously was football, but I got to coach girl softball too there my two years. And I, and I really, really enjoyed that uh, because that was the first year they went fast. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and I'm telling you, we had some, I still keep in contact with some of those girls uh, just, just because I really, really enjoyed uh, that group of girls there. And then I, and then those two years, you know, I coached, I helped coach, uh, middle school basketball with coach Franklin. So I didn't know nothing about how to coach basketball. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, coach we had, well, didn't either, well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but we had, I mean, but we hey, had, we won. Hey, my team we won. won. Yes. Team sucked. <laughs> now, now, now the first year, the first year I was the winner and then you were, then your team sucked. But then the next year you got, you got Andy, you got Andy and, and all them other guys. And then, and then, but I had JB though. That's all. And then I got, you know, so I got to coach JB. It just, uh, it just wasn't golf, though. It was basketball. I know it was. So I know. It little... <laughs> I know. It was. It was awesome. But I got to. Uh, but I got to coach. I got to coach a lot of sports there, and uh, and, and really enjoyed it. And and I'm telling you, I loved uh, our principal at the time, Miss Harvey. She was great to me. I, I loved working for her. Um, and uh, you know, I and 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 I loved working with for Coach Todd uh, there. So, uh, you know, I. It was, um, you know, it was a great experience. It was, I was blessed to be able to do that in my hometown, uh, just you know, getting out of college. Uh, and then, I, you know, if I, if I hadn't given, if I hadn't gotten that opportunity, then I wouldn't have went on, uh, you know, to do the things that I, you know, got to do. So Brad, I'm going to take Coach Franklin's spot here and just ask a simple question. What was it like coaching alongside a living legend like Scott Franklin? <laughs> um, it was, um, I'm telling you because I mean, me and Coach had. I mean, we've been friends for years. Uh, one thing about about him was is that I, I always regretted was my eighth grade year. You know, he got hurt and he didn't get to play his senior in baseball. And my eighth grade year, they they that was the first year they let us play eighth graders, and I got to start. And you know, I didn't get to play. You know, and and we ended up being really good that year, but we could have been a whole lot better. Um, you know, so that was, that was one of the regrets that, that I got, you know, uh, but, you well, know, I could just. Thanks for confirming ahead. that because I've heard that story from Frank many times. About no, it's, it's, how it's great. You know, he was, and you know, and how I tell the truth, McQuarrie. I don't lie about athletics. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, and, and, I, and I'm going to tell you, pe- people are, uh, they underestimate the, my it was I guess it was my seventh and eighth grade year so I guess it was Scott's junior and senior year how good they were at high school football when when they were running when they were running that option there and they and and and, and you know Robbie was running that quarterback at 02 and 04 and 03 and 05 over there Jeff and them were running the ball and 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 Scott was out there at wide receiver and, and they had some I mean they, they were really good um and and they had a great I mean that 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 about four or five year period there when I was in middle school and got to be a freshman football and basketball and baseball there at Campbellsville High School was was, was good, um, 
But, uh, but you know, but Scott and I, when we've done, I mean, I got to coach with him. He gave me an opportunity to do that, uh, that middle school there. And I think that opened up the door, you know, especially for me at the high school when I graduated. So, cause they were already familiar with me and, um, and, you know, so I'll always be grateful for that. And, you know, we've done a, we've done a whole lot of other things uh, together too. Fish, you know, play golf, went to Kiss concerts, um, you name it. Some, can, things, some things we probably, play, probably don't need to answer. I can play golf? <laughs> yeah. I told you when I was, when I, we worked at the factory, man. Oh, my we'd gosh. From, hey, we'd work from four to midnight, four to eight, whatever. Go fishing at night with Chicken Joe Bain. Mm -hmm. Get up the next, get up the next day and go to the, Wherever the cheapest place yep. was to play golf, Columbia, Greensburg, Buffalo, Buffalo. Buffalo. Yeah, we'd go. We'd hit that old thing around. I stunk, but you know, hey, we had a ball though. Yep. All right, Frank, your question. I inter I took your well, turn. Well, that's good, Paulie. Uh, see, I, at least Brad's confirming it. I don't lie to you about sports. I'll lie to you about some other stuff, but I ain't gonna <laughs> lie to you about sports now. Hey, Brad. Uh, <laughs> what, what about this? I don't know if you remember this, but uh, you guys get ready to come play Campbellsville, and I kept telling everybody around here that you know Campbellsville's pretty good. I said, but my, my buddy Bradley says Mayfield's going to get them, and everybody around here was really thinking Campbellsville's going to win. I'll be honest with you, because they had a really good team, and they had Petey Spalding, yes. who was an outstanding player. And I remember, I think man, you had, of course, back then you had to get fans. And I may have sent you one or two. I don't remember. But you had all 10 or 12 or yeah. you all had every game going. So it didn't matter. And I remember talking to you and, and you said, how good do you think they are, coach? And I was like, well, they're about as athletic as they've ever been. And, of course, a good coach. Uh, Petey Spock, fine athlete and player. And you said to me, we got six guys about like him. I think we're going to be okay. Yeah. And so I come over to the game. And what was it? And I think they scored once. If I'm yes, mistaken. they did. I might be wrong. Maybe I won 28 to 7. I think they scored once. And I was like, I'll be dad gum. Mayfield's got six or seven guys just like Petey Spalding. Yeah. And I thought then, I asked you, what's the difference in coaching at Mayfield about football as opposed to coaching at Taylor County? And one of the things you told me was, is that football is the only thing that matters there, basically. And mm -hmm. I know they got other sports and they do fairly well in them. But those kids grow up and every day they think, about football to teach them quite as much because it's just ingrained in them and they learn at an early age and they expect to win and it's just different and yeah. I think Mayfield is just one of those programs across the state that you know when, when they're born I think they put the, 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 the little thing on their head oh, yeah. the Cardinals and they put a football on their arm and that's it and that's just the way it is and uh, talk a little bit about that tradition about how those kids how good were they when they're little are they always good well, I mean, when we're going back to – I'll talk about that game first. Uh, you know, that was probably one of the most nervous weeks I ever had because I knew I was coming back home. And, uh, you know, if you look on the sideline over there, you know, you had Coach Thomas was the head coach. You had – Jeff was assistant. Richardson was my cousin. Uh, you had Chris, Kidwell, and Kent Settles were assistants. They were, they were two of my best friends growing up in high school. Uh, so it was, uh, you know, my mom and dad was going to be there. And it was just, uh, I mean, it was nerve wracking. And, uh, but, uh, and, and, and Petey was, he was special. And, uh, you know, we had to game plan him. And, but we were, we were really good again. You know, we were, we were special that year though. And, uh, you know, we had several kids that now their sons, uh, you know, our safety that of that year, his son just graduated from Mayfield this year, and he was he went he's going to Louisville. He was I mean, he's I mean, so you're talking about it's just a, a constant thing. But one thing when when you know you're talking about the how they get to the point they are, you know, every year it's because when I got here, uh, you know, you could walk through the hallway at the elementary school and ask any kid what what is zero and all right. What do you do on zero and one? Well, back then it was wish model. So that's all we did. So they knew what zero and one and two and four and six power and five power was and 28 and, or eight and nine. And they knew what 16 and 17 was. And that was it. I mean, they knew. So they, they were running the same plays over and over and over and over when they're in fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, middle school. And then when they got to freshman, they knew. Um, and uh, so, you know, that's, that, that's one of the things. And then, you know, when you get here, you know, People in this people in this community, um, they take they take their vacation days because they've changed it now. But when I got here, we always played that first Friday at eleven o'clock. 
the single A or, or we, I mean, if, if we made a state championship, everybody in town would take, take a vacation day. I mean, they, they would put that on their calendar in June. All right, we want the first Friday off in, in December. Um, so, you know, and, uh, but, and, and, and it continues today. And, and, you know, they went on, you know, when I left, there were a couple of years there, they went on a, uh, when they had Jonathan Jackson, man, they had, they had about a four year run there with him, but they were, it was just amazing what they did. And, uh, you know, uh, but it was, I'm very blessed to be able, um, you know, to have had that experience, especially at a young age, uh, because, you know, Coach Leahy entrusted me. Uh, he actually, you know, he told me leading up in that summer to that first game, he goes, now, look, I'll let you know when I'm ready. Because he says, I'm going to call the defense the first game. I said, okay. And he said, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to – I'll let you know when, when you're ready. I was like, okay. So we won that first game, I think it was versus Webster County. So the next game we were going to play Marshall. And he walks up to me after the game. He goes, hey, it's yours now. And I'm thinking, uh-oh. Okay, so what? What you know? What? What? I better get ready. So, uh, so what he but, was saying, you went from Webster County to Marshall County, so he got the win. He got the dub yeah. <laughs> against the Webster. So now, yeah, oh, man, here comes Big Marshall County. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, that was. Uh, and but it was. It's just. It's. It's just a different. And you know, I, and there's also schools in the state. I'm sure that Bull County's like that now, and there's other schools around that 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 are like that. Um, but I think it's a community, it's a community effort. It's a community pride. Um, and they just take it serious. And, um, and, you know, and I respect that, even though I'm not there and haven't been there in, in 10 years, I still live here and, uh, my daughters and my wife teaches there. And, uh, so, you know, I still have, uh, you know, I still keep up with, I still talk, you know, to several people in or, in or, in or around the program. And, uh, but it's, a uh, it is a, it is definitely, uh, a special place to play and coach. Alec, last question. All right. Um, you talked earlier about you created FCA Outdoors here in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Give us a brief uh, breakdown of what that is exactly. All right. Well, uh, if you're, you know, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, it is prevalent in the schools. You know, it, it, basically every, every high school has a chapter, okay? And, you know, FCA – is geared toward more of the ball sports like football, basketball, baseball, whatever. Well, a few years ago, uh, a gentleman in Georgia created FCA Outdoors, and it was caused because in 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 the country, bass fishing, uh, archery, um, shooting sports uh, are are growing every single year, and those kids in the school was kind of they didn't they were kind of not getting reached and uh so he created that and i just happened to you know when 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 i got on with fca and and that was one of the things that i, I mean i love to do i love to hunt and fish and um that was just right down my alley and uh so you know there's things that that i've done you know over the last you know year and a half with with the virus shut down you know there was we had about six or seven huge events coming up uh, starting last in March, but we just haven't been able to do it. Uh, but, you know, I've got to, you know, um, you know, be involved in, in bass tournaments and be involved in archery tournaments and be at the state championship and the national championship uh, in, in archery and be there and set up and, and, uh, and just talk to kids and talk to families and, you know, and share what FCA is and what, what, what uh what my faith has done for me and and uh and, it, and you know i've got to meet a lot of a lot of great people that i'm still um you know in touch with every single day and uh and and, and i really you know when i when i'm doing with this um you know coaching you know i'm you know, i'm still doing doing some with fca but uh but i'm you know that'll that'll be my full-time gig uh once once this is over with but um if you know there's a if there's people out there who want to know, you know, kind of what FCA Outdoors is, um, you know, I've got a web page or you know, all the social media. It's just it's just at WKY FCA Outdoors, and that kind of shows you some of the things we've done in the past. Um, now, granted, again, we haven't been able to do things since March, uh, so you know, there's not a lot of information on there right now. But like this past spring, we had a virtual bass fishing tournament all across the country. 
so we had, we had people, you know, in that tournament, uh, you know, all over the country. So there's just, there's certain things that, that, um, that, that, well, and, and to also define it is FCA is almost, they're, they're bounded by the campus and then FCA outdoors, we want to take that, that those boundaries off and go out on the lake, go out in the woods, go to these tournaments, go to these shooting tournaments and, um, and, and just, you know, serve other people and, and, and talk about, um, you know, and I've got to, I've got to host some, some, some hunts, uh, with some wonderful people and, um, and got to, uh, you know, go on some great deer hunts here in the last year and a half, um, just because of the opportunity and the doors that's opened up in the outdoor world. <laughs> Frank, last question, brother. All right. Hey, Bradley, I'm going to tell them a couple things and I got a serious question for you. Okay. Uh, just to show you how things went Macquarie and Alec back in the old days, you know, I was a great basketball, middle school basketball coach, probably legendary around here in regards to middle school basketball. Uh, yeah, yeah. Since the sarcasm, but that, me and Bradley are sitting in this office, and this parent comes in after uh, you know my eighth grade team won by about thirty, and his seventh grade team lost probably their seventh or eighth game in a row, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and we're sitting in the office, and basically you know we're, you know it went about like we thought it was going to go, you know whoever we played, and a parent and somebody came in, and they're really raking Brad over the coals about. What's he doing with the team and why are they so bad? And they watch the eighth grade play and they they look like a well-oiled machine and you're not coaching them and you're not doing that. And <laughs> he looked and said, we, we practice for an hour and a half, just like the eighth grade does. We do exactly the same thing. Coach Franklin's in there with me. We do the same drills. We run the same plays. We do everything. The difference is, is that seventh graders ain't no good in basketball. <laughs> and, 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 he, and the guy went, all right, all right, yep. thank you. Turn that one down. <laughs> Well, sometimes great <laughs> kids, but they just weren't good at basketball. That's yep. just the way it was. So, uh, and, and that 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 is <laughs> that's that's a true story. And I still and I still have that philosophy today. I haven't changed it's a not bit. Very good. Great great guys, but they just can't play basketball. Yep. Uh and Brad, two things. Greg Richardson thinks that Mayfield's gonna win every year. Oh yeah. And no uh, doubt. And if you can if you can remember this guy, I see him probably twice a week up here at the cornerstone. If I stop in there to get me a cup of coffee, our old boss, Lynn Spires. He's still yes. around. Yeah. He, he's, he, he's in bad shape in regard to moving his shoulders and how hard he works. And oh my gosh. he just won't quit working. But anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. Last thing I want to know about Brad, your daughters. What are they up to? How old are they now? Mm. What, what are they involved in? Tell us a little bit about them. Well, Brooke is a senior now, uh, which I just can't believe. Uh, she's a cheerleader. She played basketball up until a couple years ago, and then she decided to be a cheerleader. But I might. I, I really wish she would kind of go back and play this year. Uh, <laughs> but um, she actually went and played last uh, the other night at, uh, at, at down here at the, what they call the Blue Building. And uh, so that might have stoked a little fire in her a little bit. So we'll see. Uh, but, yeah, and then uh, Bailey is my youngest. She's in sixth grade. Um, so she's – She's trying to figure out what um, what athletics, you know, she's talked about, about volleyball in middle school, basketball in middle school. So, you know, she's just trying to figure out where, where she fits in. Uh, and then Misty, my wife, she still teaches at the, at the elementary school uh, at Mayfield. So they're all in at the Mayfield schools. Uh, and, um, but yeah, when, um, you know, when, when Brooke was born, you know, 16 years ago, that, that, uh, when when you have daughters, that 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 changes that changes your, your it changes you very very quickly, I'm telling you. Especially uh, so, but yeah, they're they're great. They're they're healthy. They they're 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 great girls. Um, and uh, you know that's probably one of the or two of the greatest accomplishments I ever have uh, is having those. That's two girls. Absolutely. Well, Brad, that's all the time we have on the Fab Four podcast today, and we certainly appreciate you joining us yep. and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing what goes on in the future and uh, your future coaching career and uh, you know there's all the good things that happen and, and we really are rooting for you here awesome awesome and uh, you know with my new job here at McCracken uh, our first scheduled game is Mayfield so that's gonna be, <laughs> uh -oh. yeah yeah so we got uh so that's uh September 11th if everything goes good uh over at, at McCracken uh, Mayfield will come there and so it'll be uh I'm looking forward to it if, if we get to play
Well, Bradley, I like your ch I like your chances at McCracken County rather than playing at what's that stadium called? Oh, War, War Memorial. Yeah. War Memorial. War Memorial. Y'all yeah. ripped off Metcalf County when they came there that year. That yeah. guy got a yeah. first down. I'm telling you, I coached the Taylor County. Metcalf barely beat us. They were dang good. And they were good. Y'all ripped them off over there. They they were they were good. Uh, I can't they believe were, they were that good. They were they really, were really good. good. We we actually we actually played them two years in a row, and they were yeah, they were good. Gosh, they were they were they were solid. We went there one year, and they were solid. Paul, don't you tell David Tanell that I said Metcalf County's that dang good in football. But let me tell you, for about two or three years, they were really good. Yes, the harvest had it rolling down there, didn't it? Oh, yeah. they were good, man. Yeah. Bradley, thanks for thanks for everything, Bradley. All right, brothers, appreciate it. Hey, just before we go here, want to uh, just uh, give a shout out to the old new. Uh, I don't know if you can see that a little bit. Yeah, but right. it or not. but anyway, Taylor oh. County's new football turf field is uh, happening right now. Should be open to, for play in about three weeks. So uh, for everybody here on the uh, Fab Four podcast and the Hatcher Auto Sales Fab Four podcast, if you need a new vehicle, a uh, rebuilt one. Uh, 5911 New Lebanon Road. Talk to Danny or Daniel Hatcher, 270-469-6357. And that's all the time we have today on the Hatcher Auto Fab Four Podcast. See ya.